My feet are sweaty all the time. Mm. It's just yeah. part of it, man, you know? I, I've actually mean? seen toothpaste and hemorrhoid creams that look exactly the same, yeah. coloring and everything. You have to read or else bad things. Right. Yeah. Well, better not to put toothpaste on your asshole. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god, the yeah. interview's going great. <laughs> Welcome to Room 6, the channel is dedicated to the local music scene and the people that make it, including me and these guys. I'm Josh, and today, my guest... I guess our singer-songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, and a guitarist. <laughs> <laughs> With a new single coming soon, we'll talk about. Yes, yes absolutely. Yes. Um, they're actually part of the band Virtue Sound, and the former guitarist for them was Dylan Jenkins, who's been on, in this kitchen. Yes. Yes, he has. Uh, Adam Patterson, I believe he was part yes. of the band. Yes, he was. Yes. Removed. Miss you, Dylan. Self-described as vocalist, writer, dweeb. <laughs> Uh, this young lady's been making a lot of uh, noise on the local scene, and uh, she, she's actually been part of the Homegrown Songwriter Showcase over at the Artisan that Hal Savar is running and that he's been nice enough to uh, ask me to, to live stream and do reviews of. If you haven't seen that review yet, you know, check it out after watching this one. Cards up here. In the meantime, please welcome to the channel Zoe Day and Ben Doran. I said it that way on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> of Virtue Sound. Say hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> So go ahead and introduce yourselves properly and, and let them know what you do in the Sure, band. yeah. I'm Zoe Day. Uh, I'm a singer, a songwriter. play guitar, drums, little bass, and I'm just out here doing my thing. Um, yeah, I moved here from North Carolina six years ago, and I've just been running. Huh? Raleigh, North Carolina. Yeah, there it is. Jumped ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about you, Ben? Uh, my name is Ben Doran. I play guitar, and that's pretty much it. That's, pretty <laughs> much it. that's, not that's all they let me do is play guitar. That's all they let me do, yeah. Right on. <laughs> so, now, we'll get to you in a second, but you, how long have you lived in Vegas? Uh, Jesus, like 17 years. Same. Yeah. We're locals. Oh, man. Cheers. Incidentally, official welcome to the channel. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Oh. Hmm. If you're watching, I hope you have a drink or at least something you enjoy. In the meantime, um, now you, how'd you go from Raleigh, North Carolina to Vegas? Was there stops in between there somewhere? Um, no. I had this internal awakening and I just felt like I needed to go. I didn't feel like I could become the greatest version of myself where I was mm -hmm. and I felt like I needed to leave and I needed to be somewhere different to be someone different and I wound up here. Now that was 2016 if I'm Yes, 2016. April 1st, 2016. April Fool's Day. Yes. Did anybody, did anybody think you were joking when you told me? I'm not sure they did, no. Uh, <laughs> um, can, so you were basically, you know, still teen, still teenage years then? I was 21. Ah, don't do the math. I was 21, so, <laughs> yeah. So you're at that right age of, I'm going to do something kind of crazy and, and follow what I think is calling me. Yeah, pretty much. Be yep, before life weighs you down. Love you, honey. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> and then you, where'd you move from? Uh, Los Angeles, California. Los Angeles? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, Hmm. Might want to scoot over a little bit. I think you're half out of shot. Oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> half of he's half a guitarist. <laughs> mm. Now I know because I used to live in SoCal. Um, LA is a big place. Yeah. What 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 is could be considered mm -hmm. LA is a big place. Yes. What part of LA? Uh, so I grew up. I was born in Long Beach. LBC. Um, and I grew up in Rancho Palos Verdes. So if you know where that is, right. I do. Peninsula. I've driven through. Yeah, <laughs> that's where I grew up. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Yeah, I have I have family in various parts of San Bernardino, uh, okay. San Bernardino County. Nice. And um, my I used to uh, live in San Diego, so been through there many many times, the various parts, and used to have a 
girlfriend who lived in Northridge. Mm. So, all that. And she used to go to UC Riverside. So, I've hit a whole bunch of LA. Nice, yeah. Enough to hate it. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot to hate. Now, unfortunately, I didn't really know that Ben was coming and <laughs> uh, until the last moment. Yes. So, I don't have questions for him particularly. So, I'm, I'm winging it here. Bear with me. But you, Zoe. Yes. For a singer songwriter, by the way, stick around. They're going to play some music upstairs in room six. I think we got uh, three songs or four songs, maybe, and it's going to be amazing. But it is not going to be music like Five Finger Death Punch and Nocturnal Affair. No. And you are a fan <laughs> of that heavy stuff, aren't you? I love Nocturnal. They are. Yes. One of my favorite interviews I've done. Yeah, they've been um, good friends of mine for some time. And I do love Five Finger Death Punch, actually. That was one of the first rock bands I got super into when I was in middle school. <laughs> it's it's just some... I kind of understand, because i also done the singer-songwriter thing, and I've written a lot of acoustic-based rock and roll love songs, acoustic-based stuff. Mm -hmm. But then I have no problem you know, rocking out just the hard stuff, the stuff you can't even understand what they're saying, any of that. Yes. And... Um, I've had some of that on this channel, and will again, but I just, I find it interesting how, what can influence and uh, excite us, even though we don't do that kind of music. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, now, uh, Virtue Sound, mm -hmm. first of all, where did the name come from? Well, I originally started this project um, years ago, and okay. it was No Virtue. Ooh. It was no virtue. Sin City. And I had this, I don't know, I, I had this idea that my young mind hadn't quite formed yet. I was just trying to figure out, okay, what's going to make the most sense here? And I was very rebellious. I just felt like, you know, I, I need to I need to share my rebellion. And <laughs> and I had actually let me derail. I had this dream. I had this dream. I have very, very vivid dreams. Anybody who knows me personally knows this. Mm -hmm. And I journal all of them. And I had this dream that really stood out to me. And there was this, I was in this cabin that had this loft. And it was a clean place, but it was very cluttered. There were things everywhere, right. all over the place. And I'm trying to navigate through this place. And there's this little old lady. And I can still hear her voice. Okay. This little old lady who I've never met. This isn't a real person. This is just a character in my dream. Right. And she said to me, she said, Zoe, you know what your problem is? I said, what? She said, there's not enough God in your song. So, of course, I get turning on that. Mm -hmm. Turning. This is not religious. This is barely spiritual. This was just, it was a message to me that I need to be myself in okay. my music and stop trying so hard to fit into a, a category that already exists. Right. And, and so yeah. when, after I had that dream and I got thinking about it and I started writing and I was writing these songs that it was finally, I was writing the songs that I've been dreaming I would write. Mm -hmm. Finally, they're coming. They're like, they're happening. And I said to myself, no virtue. My songs don't embody that at all. No, they don't. My songs are about becoming better and moving forward and accepting our pain. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, virtue, I suppose, huh? Right. So. And then this is your virtue sound or the virtue sound. Yes. Right on. Yes. So see, that's, I, I didn't know where it came from. Like, mm -hmm. I, it's not a, it's not a usual name, which is good. New musicians, especially out there. It's good to not let yourself be like anybody else. Once you decide that, okay, this is my sound, embrace it. Yes. And as far as like your act name or whatever, if it's not your personal name, um, pick something that people are, you know, if you Google it, does anything else come up? Oh gosh. Yeah. Does it? There was nothing. No, no, exactly. no. Very Cause, important. Cause yeah. I, I did, I Googled it and I was like, <laughs> if it already oh, exists, it, yeah. Had I known there was a horror movie called Room 6, I would have named this channel differently. Oh. Because, <laughs> yeah, at Room 6 LV is how you get right to my channel. It, and it, it's so frustrating to be like, <sighs> apparently it was a terrible movie. I never heard of it. 
And yet there's all these videos about it first that come up, whether it's YouTube or Google or what, and it's so frustrating. But I digress. Ben, what sort of music influences you? Um, <clears throat> well, uh, probably uh, like the Gypsy Kings. Oh, good choice. You know, that kind of stuff, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, classical music. I, was, I grew up listening to like Bach, and Beethoven, and that kind of shit. And, right. And then the, you know blues, like Eric Clapton. As you do, you know. Yeah, Eric Clapton, Steve Ray Vaughan, Hendrix. You know, right. later on, Beatle, the Beatles. Mm -hmm. just, just a little bit of everything, I guess. Yeah. I, I listen to a uh, like a uh, uh, house music too. Wow. Like, like bootsy cats, like that kind of stuff. Bootsy yeah. cats. I, 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 I say that. I, I do say that. <laughs> I, I love house music, man. Mm. Uh, yeah, man. Just pretty much everything. The country music. I love Brad Paisley, dude. Yeah, Brad Paisley's good Brad stuff. Paisley, yeah. He's yeah. Sick. Um, I, I grew up listening to country and western, and uh, that's a Bill Blues Brothers joke. Uh, I, I grew up listening to like Kenny Rogers, Crystal Gale, and and a lot of that where they were telling stories. It wasn't this country rock. I can appreciate the country rock a lot, but a lot of it is, you know, why don't you just do the rock thing? Because you're already there, you know? But, you know, I'm not going to yuck someone's yum by any means. <laughs> I like Garth Brooks. Yeah, uh, country's I, hard to play, too. Yeah. It's way harder than rock music. That's, that's it, it's surprisingly hard. And yeah. so many more instruments that you can you can pull out to, to do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, an inspiration for me, I've talked about on this channel before, Someone who always makes me think, like, why am I not practicing right now? Why am I not working on a new instrument or something? Yeah. Dolly Parton. Really? Yes. In in a two-hour show, she plays, like, nine instruments. Really? Yeah. She's I didn't know she was that. crazy talented, yeah. Wow. Never mind crazy. the fact she's an awesome person. Yeah. yeah. You know, philanthropist. But um, also, uh, Sting. Sting is... I love Sting. Sting actually. always makes me feel, er yeah. like, why am I not practicing right now? Why am I not working on something? Why am I not doing yoga? Yeah. You know, something like that. All that stuff. You're just like, oh. Yeah. All right. It looks like he's 40, too. He's like 70. Yeah. No, he's just posted a thing uh, about the whole um, Ukraine and Russia thing. At the time of recording, it's still going on. Um, where he's, he pulled out a performance again of... Um, was it? In Europe and the Americas. You know the song? Um... Englishman in New York. No, 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 no. It's about basically <clears throat> the Cold War. And he's like, it's never been more appropriate to bring this song back than right now. Mm. And, right. He, and he sings it, and he sang it now with that, and you're yeah. just like, how did you get better? How did your voice... Yeah. Be? <laughs> God. It's even better than it was. Uh, anyway, moving on. Mm. Actually, no, I wanted to get back to you real quick. So we, we talked about that. Now, you've been in other bands before? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, a couple. What, what you got? I don't even know. I mean, <laughs> what? what a band! But, well, um, <laughs> what bands are you in right now? What a band! I'm not really band. in any bands. Um, are you still doing Killfeather? Yeah, I'm still doing oh. Killfeather. Oh, I'm in Killfeather. I've been trying to get Kevin on the show forever. He's oh, so busy. Okay. Yeah. Killfeather, Supermarket yeah. Sushi. Yeah. Yeah. Supermarket this guy sushi. is so humble. Kevin, Kevin Killfeather, let's get on the channel, buddy. Yeah, let's do this thing. Well, <laughs> Kevin. You'll have fun, right? Yeah, I play bass in Killfeather. I thought you looked familiar. Yeah. Uh, did you play Tavera Costera? Yeah, that's I met you there. Yes! Thank you. That was like Was that the same show that we did? I don't remember. Cause just like when I met Maybe. met you, just when I, like when I met you at Chiba Hut, I met I, I met you tonight and I was like, Do you know this guy? Yeah. You're a thing I know. <laughs> because I did a review. Scotty Dub's music video where you beat the crap out of him. Oh yeah. Hi. And I'm and I'm looking at you going like <laughs> Why? why? Why do I recognize? But, you know, because in the video you wear shorts. Right. It was too cold to wear shorts, Chiba. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I was just, and then later I, I, I looked at it and I'm like, that's so day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If you haven't seen that video from Sky Dub, uh, it's called um, All, All My, My Exes. Exes. And it's, it's hilarious. And she gets to beat him up and torture him. It's awesome. Uh, but yes, to Verna Costera, Kill Feather. Yeah. I forget who was headlining that show. I think it was that out of town band. Um, yeah, it was like some Detroit Tiger or, or some. Yeah. Anyway, we digress. Sorry, rabbit hole. <laughs> Zoe, mm. you said running a business is the same as being poor all the time, except now I have lots of things to do while still being poor. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Put it out there. I'll find it. 
<clears throat> I cannot agree with anything more in my life because <laughs> I've actually owned a few businesses and, yeah. and every single one eventually you're just like, it's not, it's not viable to keep this going, you know, uh, but now are you talking about the horse riding training yes. or about the music thing or just all of it? Um, primarily, primarily my business in Las Vegas riding instruction. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very much a labor of love. I love my horses. I love my students. Mm -hmm. I love that I've been able to build this. I love the community that I've built around that. It doesn't really coincide with the music thing. This is, it's, they're it, totally separate worlds. Well, if you did more country, it would. <laughs> right, I know. <laughs> no, I think it does because I think it helps, it, it gives you that uh, kind of escape from just Vegas and all that it is. Yes. And it gives you a chance to like, I'm doing something without going to a nine by nine to five retail something yes. or working in a casino or whatever, you know, the other options are to, to, to fund the music thing. Yes. So I think, uh, and you have an interesting story about how you got that job, don't you? Las Vegas writing instruction? Yeah. I own the business. It's my business. Oh, I'm sorry. No, wait, didn't you tell me you walked up to the, and knocked on the door? Oh, right. Okay. So. So what happened was. Rewind. <laughs> yeah. Rewind over a decade ago. I thought this was the same thing and you just worked there. I didn't realize this was your thing no. until, until very recently. Yeah, the, so Las Vegas Writing Instruction is mine. But um, kind of a cool story about me getting into horse training. So, oh, oh, by the way, think. You want to learn how to ride a horse? Go there. So, when I was four, my dad took me to horse camp and it was over from there. <laughs> um, We've lost her. So I went to horse camp and I rode at every chance I, I, I had the opportunity to and it was relatively infrequent. And then when I was a teenager, I actually, I, I grew up in a trailer park. I didn't really have much of anything. And, um, Same. cheers. Cheers. Cheers to having more. Yes. Making more, creating more. Not fresh out of Compton, straight out the trailer. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know, never had enough to eat, that kind of deal. And and I got off the bus to stop early one day because I saw the neighbors on the street had horses. And one thing led to another. Hi, I'm Zoe. I love horses. Can I help you? And I wound up working for a cutting horse trainer, which is um, cow horses, basically horses that work on cows. Mm -hmm. So you think farm, ranch, like right. type stuff. And so I started working for her, and then the journey went on from there. I worked for other trainers, and la da 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 Moved to Vegas, sold my horses, wasn't going to do horses anymore. I was just going to do music, and then I was going absolutely insane. Mm -hmm. I had a legitimate psychotic break um, where I just could not regulate myself. I couldn't regulate my emotions. I couldn't regulate... My drinking and my my partying and everything I was doing and I said to myself like something has to change you have to you have to get it together because mm -hmm. if you ever ever want to chase this dream that you have you you just have to get your head on straight and really the only way for me to do that I think was um, to get back into horses yeah and so I did that and when COVID happened I started Las Vegas riding instruction. And I started teaching, and that just has grown and grown and grown. Um, definitely had its ups and downs. Right. I've moved a couple of barns, and now for the first time in my life, I'm um, at peace. I oh. have peace. So how many horses do you have now? I have two. I have two horses, and I have a couple of horses in training. I have about 20 students who come every week nice. and growing. What's the age range? I have five-year-olds and I have 30-year-olds. Nice. Um, I, I mean, anyone, everyone who has an interest in horses, I want to help nurture that. There you go. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, is Piper the narcoleptic horse still, still with you? Uh, no, Piper passed away, actually. Oh. Piper passed away uh, last year, so I'm not sure exactly what happened, 
she was in a pasture and she is no longer with us. Mm. So, so. R.I.P. Piper, sorry. Yeah. Mm. Uh, now, how about you? What funds your music dream? Are you doing it enough? <clears throat> I do it just by it funds itself. It's right. I've been for the last year, well, since I was like 24 on and off, I've been doing it full time. Nice. You know, it can be done. Yeah. I just, um, it's, it can be done. Yes. Yeah. It's not easy. Right. But. Um, things change though when you have a kid. That's true. I also live out of my car, out of my vehicle. <laughs> That's by the way, I'm, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I live in my car. It's a tiny bus. So it's a small little. It's pretty cool, though. He's I mean, like, a, yeah, I mean, I mean, I live in my car, but it's like, he's got a little stove and a bed it's and like a whole setup or a yeah, refrigerator. It's, like a it's really life. cool. It's like a van life thing. What you, you know? Yeah, what are you, Chris Farley? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. I mean, but, I wish. I wish. Oh, man. No, there's there's some amazing things people can do with their vehicles. And, yeah. Awesome. Um, there was, I came to actually like being, being passionate about music and caring about music too late for that. Like, by the time it happened, I was on my first marriage. Mm. And okay. my wife was like, yeah. you know, and, and then I, I, I got my, my only wife now. <laughs> well, we've been together over 20 years. I think it's safe to say. Yeah. Not not going anywhere. But, you know, my, my this this will be the last one, I promise. Your current wife. Yes. Yeah. No, no, this will be the last one, I promise. One way or another. Uh, but she was like, you know, you've been talking about this stupid album. Go record the album. we got a tax refund. Go. You know, and that's what you do when you're just married and not no no kids. Yeah. But once you have a kid, it becomes suddenly like, I can't just you can't just do whatever you want. Go on tour and live out of you know whatever. Yeah. And and you know because there I wish I had the drive that I have now for the Room Six channel and yeah. and music. I, I do a little music on the side for myself. I wish I had that drive back when I was willing to and able to sleep in my car and right. you know. Eat Seven Eleven for dinner. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but at the same time, my, it's you have to do what feels right to you, and both of you are an example of that. Yeah. So you're both living someone's dream. Yes. You know? Yeah. And and even and, and it's so important to be grateful. It's so I'm hard. I'm grateful it's, every day yeah. for everything. It's so hard though to sometimes step back and subjectively just be like, you know, life's not that bad. Maybe I need to stop complaining. And then go back in and keep working on what it is you're, you're going towards. Which, like, again, not not to compare my story to yours or anything, but, you know, I try to put out, now I'm up to three videos a week, usually. Right. And I got, a, like, I've got a list, a to-do list of record, write this, record this, edit this. And and it fl it's always fluctuating. And um, if I don't stay there, the hard part is staying on top of that. And also giving my family time, mm. and yes. giving and giving me time. Sometimes I need to just be like. It's so important, you know. I, yeah. I do. I would love to touch on that. <clears throat> when I first uh, when I first moved here, I said I'm gonna do music. It's all I'm gonna do. <laughs> They're gonna love me. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna love me. Don't you see? <laughs> um, I'm just gonna do music. I'm not going to do anything else because every hour of my time must be devoted to my craft. <laughs> Mm. And what happened was... <laughs> it did not work that way. The because I was yeah. devoting so much time to my crafts. The bills weren't getting paid. Yeah, bills weren't getting paid. I was getting distracted. It's like... Like, I think now about... I mean, truly, this is this is an interesting topic. How mm -hmm. much time do you spend... Do you need yeah. to spend actually oh, playing God. music? Oh, God. I, I, How much time yeah. do we actually spend sitting down and writing? Because I know for me, mm -hmm. now that I kind of have my head on straight, which I absolutely did not for a long time, now that my head is kind of screwed on straight, I think I might play guitar for maybe a few hours a week. Yeah. But there's so much I do outside of that time now that that it's like the responsibility makes makes the wheels turn of everything. So without that, mm -hmm. what? Exactly. I, this is a shameless merch plug, but I, it's for a reason. I have a line of merch on Room Success Shop called Shut Up, or no, uh, what is it? Make Music Not Excuses. Yeah. Shut Up is coming. <laughs> <laughs> Make Music Not Excuses because they've seen Room 6. My editing computer is here. All my music gear is behind me, and I have to remind myself to turn around, 
get up and go make some music for whatever reason. Just go make some music. I always, I'm always, it's like going to the gym. I'm always happy when I do it afterwards. But getting up and getting off your ass, and, or, or stopping, like, but I'm, I'm in the zone. I'm here. I'm stuck. I, 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 I'm, I'm, you know, I got this deadline. And you let, you talk, you talk yourself out of doing the reason you started yeah. in the first place, which is mm-hmm. make the music and follow it. So, mm-hmm. cool. It's about oh. get going, the momentum. And then there's a thing called a flow state, which you yes, mm-hmm. that you have to mm-hmm. focus, you know, really hard on yeah. one particular thing, goal. And then the other, the other fun thing is if you're trying to learn something new. There's this, this, you know, oh, cool, 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 cool. Oh, God, I suck, I suck, I suck, I suck, I suck. Oh, hey, no, no, I'm okay. And you got to get through that, that valley. And it, it never ends. It never ends. It never ends. It's, yeah. it's, uh, what is happening? Okay, okay, oh, what's happening? And it's yeah. like, especially because I, I don't have a massively musical background. I was going to ask. Um, my, my dad is a piano composer and is extraordinary and my grandparents sing opera and so I grew up around it Mm -hmm. and I played tenor saxophone in band, which I don't know if I could play one if I picked it up again, Mm. you know, I've played that middle school, high school. It's just a fancy recorder. (laughs) Well... (laughs) <laughs> she got well, the hands. <laughs> but for all intents and purposes, mm-hmm. I could, I didn't know anything. Right. I didn't know anything about being in a band or writing a song yeah. or really singing. I wasn't mm-hmm. really even that good of a singer, and I don't know if I can even say that now. I'm still working on it. But because of that, as my ear develops, getting back to the learning curve. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, as my ear develops, I can hear things that I wasn't hearing before, and that's where that can be really frustrating, because it's like, wow, I can hear what's wrong now. Right. Whereas before, maybe I couldn't. I can hear what's wrong now, so now, like, it's like constantly climbing that, trying to get ahead of it. Yeah, if you ever want to cringe, listen to yourself (laughs) when you first started recording anything. Oh my gosh, should we? No, no. <laughs> we don't have time. We don't have time. We'll, we'll all be just on the floor crying. Um, real quick. Yes. Are you are you still in college? Are you still mm. pursuing? St- I, I asked for a reason because I want to. Can you walk me through the process between or the the path from criminal justice to psychology to horses? <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, obviously they're all related. Obviously. Same thing. Uh, well, I I really wanted. To go into law enforcement when I was younger. Okay. Um, because I just have this... I don't know. I, I used to have a hero complex. I felt like I could just save the fucking world. Gotcha. I can... If I can just do the thing that has to be done to help the people, then the people will be helped. And that was my brain at 19 years old. And the power so, of music! <laughs> and so I, I was studying criminal justice and I was doing all of that and I wound up um, doing investigations on child abuse and neglect cases, which I was not unfamiliar with. But I realized as I was doing that, that the problem go, is much greater than... Yeah, um, unfortunately just having people who care working in it and so it, it it became like a web for me internally that I felt like I'll never be happy doing this because I will never be able to do the things that I see could be done it will never mm-hmm. happen it just and I don't want to sound like doomsday. I don't right. want to say that we can't change or we can't make things better. But the perspective I was coming from, um, just I found in my youth was not conducive. Mm-hmm. And so I moved on from that and I actually started studying psychology um, right before COVID happened. And I started on that. I really love it. I'm kind of just like taking classes as I go 
and I'm not thinking to myself, I'm going to get my bachelor's in psychology, I'm gonna and, and I'm going to yeah. be a psychologist in, in a couch speaking to my clients. I don't, I don't so, think yeah. that. I just really love psychology. I love behavioral health. I love neuroscience. I love learning about being human. Mm-hmm. I love learning about the human mind. There's so much that we don't know that there is to figure out and find out. And so it's more of, I guess at this point, it's a, it's a, it's an intellectual hobby of mine, but I apply it to my music. I apply it to my teaching. Oh, it'll come in real handy in the music business. That's for sure. Yeah. You can immediately spot types of people. It doesn't, you don't, you don't want to pigeon, you don't want to read, you know, judge a book by its cover or pigeonhole people, but you can spot the people who are like, you're toxic. You're a manipulator. Mm. You're someone I can trust. Oh my goodness, yes. Yep. Yes. It's uh, one of the, back when I didn't have my head all straight, you're looking at a man who, I spent seven years getting an associate's degree. Can you pass me one of these from there? Well, I don't, there's not one of that exact one. Well, there's the... The Voodoo Ranger? Voodoo Ranger, sponsor me. Anyway. (laughs) Oh wait, I lied. Did I lie? No, it's different. Yeah, it's two. I will take, hold on. Avenger. Did you just throw a can in the trash can? We have a recycle can here, young lady. Well, you hate the planet. Isn't Las Vegas getting rid of recycling because people don't know how to do it? But we know how to do it. Uh, we're going to take a quick booze break. Booze break! Before we move on, I just wanted to compliment you on your Instagram. Because you seem to have an Instagram that is equal parts model. And equal parts motivational positivity. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no problem. But like you, you take photos with an eye towards this is for the gram. I can tell, right? Yes. Yes. There's a lot of photos where I'm just like, did you have somebody doing that photo for you? Because it looks very much like a photographer's portfolio. Oh well, thank you. No problem. Yeah, some of them, some of them are photographers, and a, a lot of them are just. Me throwing things together. Cool. I actually, I think I would have been a photographer in another life. And maybe it's not too late. But I, 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 am, I love... I'm fastly learning that it is in... I love to be behind the camera almost more than I enjoy being in front of it. Same. But I'm fastly learning it could be a very dangerous rabbit hole. Yeah. You're like, but if I just have this lens. If I just <laughs> had this. If I just had this editing program or whatever. Then I'd be happy, you know, it's, it's the old, when are you going to be satisfied? Mm-hmm. Kind of like knowing as a paint, as an artist, when do I walk away? When do I say I'm done? Right. And it's never finished. Same with the, same with the song. Yeah. My opinion. Um, now, aside from guitar, do you do any other sort of instruments or, or creative outlets? Ben is a yeah. badass bass player. Okay. Yeah, I'm a bass player too, yeah. Do tell. Yeah. Well, I play well, the bass. I think you said it. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, I think you did mention earlier that you, you play bass for... Uh, Kill Feather. Yeah, Kill Feather, I started, right. I started on bass. I started when I was 17 on the bass. The boss. And I switched to guitar when I was 21. Right on. Did you start on bass because a band needed a bass player, or...? No, it was... Well, I was kind of messing around on guitar, mm-hmm. and then my uncle was like, you should be a bass player because you'll find a lot more work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, bass so players was, always can find work, yeah. sp- and a drummer with his own rehearsal space and, and gear, yeah, or I so mean, a uh, transport. Yeah, it's when I'm playing guitar, you know, you get four gigs a month, and when I'm playing bass, I get five. So. <laughs> five is more than four. Yes, <laughs> <It's> more. <laughs> you made it sound like it was like double. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, what was that next thing? The next thing is oh yes. So, we've talked a bit about how you got here. You were a bit. In the, Naive a little bit, a little, mm-hmm. little doe-eyed, yes. and now you, you're a little bit wiser. You're yes. a business owner. Yes. You get to work, you get to choose what seventy hours a week you work. Pretty much, yes. Yeah. Have you been um, rushing with anything else besides athletic foot cream? I'm sorry. <laughs> you posted once that you almost brushed with athletic foot cream. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Just like. What? Okay, so you know, like, the little tubes of Lotrimin, yes. right? Mm-hmm. Okay, and so I, like, almost put it on my toothbrush, and I'm like, yeah, maybe mm. not. I don't know. Maybe not. No, I can't say that. I don't Whose, know. What cream was it? Of course, it was mine. Oh. I'm an athlete. 
My I beard's see. sweaty all the time. Yeah. Shaw. It's just yeah. part of it, man, you know. I, I've actually things. seen toothpaste and hemorrhoid creams that look exactly the same, yeah. coloring and everything. You have to read or else bad things. Right. Yeah. Well, better not to put toothpaste on your asshole. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god the interview's going great <laughs> so awesome sauce um <laughs> if we can get back to beating up scotty dub real quick okay so i wanted to ask uh that looked like it was kind of an all-day shoot kind of thing mm -hmm. whose house was that so that was a mansion mm. oh yeah he posted about looking for extras and stuff and uh, shooting in a mansion Yes, it was a mansion. I believe it was owned by one of his friends, and we all went there and hung out for the day, and I, I actually, when we did that shoot, I didn't know that was going to happen. Nice. I didn't know that that was happening. Uh, they, you know. To oh, by the way, we're shooting a music video. To set the scene, there's some, <laughs> so, okay. there's some ladies that are like rolling out dough and <laughs> baking and stuff, and here comes Zoe. Walking with a rolling pin. <laughs> I think it was a rolling pin? Yes, it yes. was a rolling pin. To the garage. So oh, that was a lot of fun, though. Insane. We, um, in the garage, so to create the, the, the smoke effect, yeah. the fog effect, we had everybody who was there and go in there and smoke marijuana. <laughs> because we didn't have I have it. never heard a more sky dumb thing in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my so everybody God. was smoking weed to get the the smoke effect. So already you're all just mellowed. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my God. That was a good time. Oh Jesus Christ! Speaking of which, uh, I did a review of a of a showcase Scotty Dub runs or uh, an open mic, really. Or no, no, it's more of a showcase. You you played on it. Chiba Hut. Chiba Hut. I was yeah. getting there. I did a review of it here. Uh, Chiba Hut is an awesome venue. The one on Sahara and Rainbow. Rainbow. Rainbow, thank you. Sahara and Rainbow is the only Chiba Hut in Nevada that actually has live music. Um, I talked to them. Yeah. You know, but uh, it's awesome, and the food is amazing. I never in a million years thought, okay, so I showed up there. Mm -hmm. There's there's a bill. It's a show. Right. Scotty organizes it and says this is who's playing, and, and we you, do the thing. And you weren't on the bill, were you? No, I wasn't on the bill. Um, Crashed. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I wasn't on the bill. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to make it. Um, yeah. And so I so I went, I'm thinking Chiba Hut, like a sandwich shop? There's a show at a sandwich shop? I don't know. Like, how interested am I really in that? And yeah. honestly, I got there, and I was just blown away. There are so many amazing people. And, yeah. And the setup there for live music was excellent, and... It was really cool. The only downer is that it's out. So you're exposed to the elements, so it was a bit well, cold. Well, it's a little chilly, but it's warming tops. up now, so you know. <laughs> yeah, but it it was I was I was excited, and uh, I'm actually at the time of filming filming. I have an interview with another band there tomorrow, so if you haven't subscribed, click down there so you don't miss out. Uh, I'll be interviewing a band called Headgore. It ought to be interesting because Chiba Hut I don't picture as thrashcore <laughs> or thrash metal, <laughs> you noise core. You know, it's going to be very interesting. But at least, whatever whatever goes on, at least I'll have yummy subs. So, I wanted to, to, to delve into some more usual interview questions real quick. Okay. Number one. We talked about kind of, you know, how long you've been in Vegas, uh, how long you've been doing music, that type of thing. I want to talk favorite shows as mm. the band. What's your favorite show memory? It could be like something really good happened, something really bad happened, something went to jail, whatever. My favorite, and I'm sorry, this is before you joined. Oh. Dylan! <laughs> I know, I love Dylan. I love you too, though. I love you both. It's okay, buddy. Um, White Russian's brothers for life. It was our very <laughs> first show as a band, and there's just something cathartic about that. These are songs that I've been working on and working on and working on and we all got in a room together and he worked on it and worked on them more and finally got them right there. And nice. <laughs> um, Blake from Mojave Sun oh. said, hey Zoe, 
are you guys ready to play a show yet? <laughs> and I said, yeah. yeah, you know, I think so. I think we're... Wait, so that flyer I saw for Mojave Sun, that was your first show? From the space. Yes. Wow. That was our very first show. And wow. it was... It was just extraordinary that this thing that we've been working on, that I've been working on, that we've been working on for so long, came together. And I felt like up to that point, my dad didn't really have, my dad, the piano composer, mm -hmm. didn't have a whole lot of faith in me and the potential of a career in music. And he flew out for that show and he filmed the whole thing for us. Good dad. Yes, good dad. And after that, my dad was like, uh, what do you need? How can I help? Do not give up. Right. I'd be the same way. And, and just, I mean, that show was, it was, this is everything that I've been trying to do. Did you tick off some this rock star moments? This is everything that I've been yeah. wanting to do. And I just, I just felt that just encompassing their joy. I just felt like, wow, I, I think I've started to figure it out. Nice. And that was absolutely my favorite. And then second to that is, of course, um, our show that we played after yeah. you joined at Tim Maria mm. Costero. Wow. How about you? I mean, I... I, I guess I would have to say, just because I don't remember most of the shows that I play. But, you know, Rock and roll, baby! <laughs> I mean, um, probably the first, uh, the most memorable one I ever did was the first ever show I did with my band when I was in high school. And I, I just started playing bass when I was 17. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like 18 at this point. I found this band, and first ever band, first time playing with people. It was right. like this kind of shitty three piece punk band. Um, and like music, <laughs> three chords. Music, yeah, it was like it was like four chords, man. It was Ooh, a little more complex, you know. Fancy. The jazz of punk bands. Yeah, it was like a little more jazzy. We had we did like four or five chords sometimes. We have a bridge in Holy there. Oh shit. Wow. Yeah, so it was a little more complex, you know. Not like Berkeley complex, but like <laughs> Community college music. School. Berkeley School of Music. <laughs> it wasn't quite that. It wasn't Berkeley complex. It was like CSN. It was like Green Day complex. It, you know, I've seen a lot of guys at Berkeley that I think are I'm better than. I got stories about Green Day. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> so, anyways, it's, it's just like this shitty band, and you know, looking back on it is like embarrassing. But the, I remember, um, and I was wearing like black t shirt that was too small for me, and black skinny jeans. Of course you were. And my hair was dyed, dyed black. It's like of course a crop it was. Top. And because I was having like a. <clears throat> I was just one of those people, you know. Were you wearing Doc Martens? No, I was wearing black bands. Because of course you were. Tell them about so, your arm. So it sounds arm. like a Scott movie. Scott, Scott, Scott. Scott. What was, about your arm? Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That was, that was another thing, too, is I shaved my arm. This is around the same time, too. Because I dyed my hair black, but I have these blonde arm hairs. So you can't, you can't see it. And you don't it's want like black really, arm hairs, because that's just weird. Yeah, that... And you can't dye them because it's like it's too many. Dye my arm hair black or shave it. Yeah, so I was like, you know, I need <laughs> dye to shave. Red. I need to shave because it's a dead giveaway. This jet black hair is not mine. Right. So <laughs> I shaved one arm and I was like, fuck well, this. This sucks. And I just left the other one unshaved. So I had one shaved arm and it had like a bunch of cuts all over it. And <laughs> Great, so now you like you cut yourself. <laughs> yeah, so oh yeah, and then people were asking me like, why is your arm shaved? Okay? Like, your arm is bald. And I was like, it was a dare. Like, somebody dared me to do oh, it. You're like, you know, <laughs> I, I got a fight with a bear or whatever. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah a bear trap. No. I got attacked by a dog or something. See, yeah, that's so. the opposite of me. Like, I grew up <clears throat> pretty much brown hair, but yeah. always blonde. Well, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. like didn't, like, if you didn't do this, you didn't know I had hair there. Yeah. And then suddenly something changed. I don't know. Oh, that. yeah. The hormones. Oh. Puberty. Puberty. Second puberty. Puberty. I need a manager. Anyway. Yeah. Uh... Okay. But this show, let me start, finish. The, oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Dude, carry on. Um, so we were, so I was playing with this, show, this band, um, and, like, it was just kind of whatever. You know, it was cool. Um, it was whatever. It was cool. It was just yeah, the best show ever played Sorry, let me do that right. No, I mean, the whatever. band. Whatever. The, <laughs> the band itself was, like, it was, it was uh, interesting, you know. Interesting. And I was, I was, I was inexperienced. 
and it wasn't the kind of music that I wanted to do. I wasn't into punk music. I was into you know Sting. I but listened it, to Sting. I listened to Supertramp when I was in high school and the Beatles. But a gig is a gig. And yeah, I just, I just wanted to play in front of people and just yep. getting up there on this in this tiny little room. The stage was probably like six inches tall, and just I felt like I was on you know this huge stage, kind of because it was like well I'm playing in front of people and right. You know, it was just a cool experience. And there were girls there, and, you know, they were kind of like bouncing around, so the boobs were like... <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, when you're 18 or 19, you know, I had... Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I you're was like, still excited about boobs back then, you know. I can still remember co-workers, <laughs> people I worked with who were attractive young ladies. Yeah. And I'm playing, we're a cover band, playing covers. And for whatever reason, the Brazilian says, comes up and leads two of them, and she goes like this... And proceeds to go like this down my guitar, down my legs. Wow! And, oh. I, and I'm just I stop playing. Over. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, she knows I'm happily married, just had a kid, <laughs> but she's just she's totally making me look like evil. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm just like, I'm gonna go back to playing now. That was awesome, but it was very weird. It was like, was weird when people touch you. Yeah, yeah. We we've, we've had lunch together, you know. It was very weird. But uh, so that, that was your best memory, was basically that... Do you have any weird fan stories? Um, yes. Oh, no. There, like, there was a couple... There was a girl, one specific girl in high school in the same band that was, like, obsessed with me. And, um... Actually, there was a couple of them. And, but there was one that was really obsessed with me, and she wanted to... I mean, take I don't blame them. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> she wanted, I, was, I was much more attractive back then, I think. Whatever. And, um... I don't know, man. Look, look at this beard. Yeah. Dude. yeah. Beard is, this is the, beard first, is the way it goes. This is my first beard. COVID. Thanks. <laughs> it took me two weeks. <laughs> I thought you were going to say months. Really? <laughs> no, it took like two months. Something, three months, maybe. Um, yeah, there's one girl, there's, uh, and she was like, uh, too young for me. But she kept, she would not leave me alone. And she was friends with my sister, so she just kept texting me. And I was like, I wouldn't even respond. And she just wouldn't stop, like, leaving me alone, following me on social media, like, messaging me. She made, like, a fake Facebook. Stalker. And was like, yeah, it was, like, kind of like a stalker situation. Damn, boy. Yeah. How old were you? I was, like, 18. How old was she? <laughs> she was, like, 16. Yeah. Damn. I, I did not talk to her. I didn't do anything. There she was... was just, for the record. There are times where I'm happy my, my, my 14-year-old daughter just really doesn't to people very much yeah <laughs> that's good there are times where i'm just like she is so not a f her she fangirls about anime characters so i have no worries <laughs> yeah. unless an anime character comes to life and shows up at the door even then she'll just be like what are you doing huh? <laughs> so right on I um, another one there's another one okay oh, i make another one do tell uh i was doing a cover gig like three months ago um at this the goldmine tavern Okay. Ah, the gold mine. Yeah, and there's some fucking crazy lady like doing crack, and she loved us the whole time. Doing crack. Ah, the gold mine. <laughs> she, she was doing crack at some point in her life. I did cocaine. And, and she was always she was in front of me, the plant in front of me the whole time, um, like looking at me and you know, like whoa, like she was like in her fifties. She take so her clothes like, off? No, not not to that point. I've had that happen. She was about to, but then we she wouldn't. Was about to. She what what went wrong was we wouldn't play Red Hot Chili Peppers. <sighs> And then she got pissed. I don't blame you. Yeah, and the rest of the night she was in yeah, my face. This. She was like this. Like, I was playing there, just trying to play. She was like, blah, 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 blah. You're not playing California music. <laughs> you know? Because Red Hot Chili Peppers is all the California music. Yeah, that's... City of Compton. Anyway. But she's very aggressive and it was, it was terrible. That's... The other. Wow. Yeah, I was... Yeah. I, I played in a, in a cover band for like seven years. Best band name ever, Revolving Door. That's me and cool. the guitars were the original members, yeah. and I was the front man, and I started out just playing guitar, I'd sing like vocals, we had a female singer, we were a seven piece band, wow. eventually we became a four piece band, we went through four keyboardists, seven drummers, ended up back on drummer number two, bassist was like, who's playing bass this, this time, and they'd show up like five minutes before the show, and you know, plug in, let's go, because we were doing covers, Yeah, right. Johnny Be Good, you know, a brown eyed girl. Mustang Salad, yeah. all that jazz. Because we were playing two drunk sailors. Mm -hmm. We were drink, playing out of like me. Huh. And they love them some, mm, yes. Yeah. And, and But we would also do deep cuts and, and we would play songs that people would be like, I haven't heard this song forever. Which was nice. 
we even we even figured out how to play Freebird over a, a break because they got together and we said hundred bucks and they got to hundred bucks together. I'm like, well, shit, all right. But there was a time we played a biker bar in town named Mr. D's. If you know Mr. D's, I know Mr. D's. You know that it's been interesting. Yeah. <laughs> This was back when Dennis owned it. This was back when it was just, like biker gangs would come in, but they would have maybe a drink and then they'd hit the road again. They weren't stupid about it. This was before the gang part of biker gang really came in. Is it like that now? I don't know. I haven't been in. Oh. I haven't been in years. But I do remember a New Year's Eve where we were paid. We negotiated for like an extra fifty bucks. Ooh, Mr. Dennis, you cheap bastard! <laughs> Literally, this island was the size of the dance parquet floor. <laughs> it was ridiculous in the corner they, and if we were lucky if, if they turned the TVs off yeah yeah but we played had a great time usually and it was you know pittance money but we were all older and it was you know it was a gig it was once a month mm -hmm. New Year's Eve two things happened stand out in my mind this is my favorite story this woman walks in right off the bat she's totally wasted on something like she was it me? No. <laughs> uh, not unless you were at the time in your 50s, 60s, mm. and you had you could tell from the neck up she was 50 miles of bad road. From the neck down, she had work done. Wow. Yeah, and she stumbled in, blah blah blah, and we're playing our covers, and suddenly she decides to hit the dance floor and start stripping. Mm. Not stripping like dancing and everything, just just, taking her, just taking her clothes off all the way down, wow. and I'm just looking at the pan like. Keep playing. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the entire dance floor just stopped and emptied out because every guy there is with a girl. Right. And every girl there is like, you, what are you, you know, let's go. This is no. And so when we finished the song, she picked up her clothes, got, to, got off the dance floor, dressed, and stumbled out the door. I hope she's not driving. No idea. Was it one song? Yeah. It was the weirdest thing. And, we're like, and, and like, that happened, right? Oh, this is the same bar where the bartender, when she got off work, or like towards the end of the night, we were doing four-hour shows, she would come, reach in her, all her tips, throw a 20 in our tip jar, and proceed to dance, and occasionally flash us her thong. <laughs> yeah, she wore it. She was, dressed as a, she was Asian. She was just a little schoolgirl. Because that was Mr. D's. Hey, class. Yeah, calling you out. <laughs> but the other thing from the same night, we're playing, and suddenly it, somebody who works there goes running across the dance floor, or what is the dance floor, with a mop towards the bathrooms. They're like, oh, someone's having a bad night. Guy got stabbed! <gasps> he survived. Wow. But it was like, to come to find out at the break, like, what happened? Why, you know? But the guy, guy got stabbed. He's okay, though. But we had to go mop it up. <laughs> it was like, where are we? <laughs> so anyway, yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of... That's one of those things that makes you start rethinking. Maybe yeah. I don't want to be in a band in Vegas yeah. for now. That that being said, there are a lot of great places to play in Vegas, covers or originals. Yeah. So don't let that dissuade you. But it's fun to trade these horror, these these war stories. And don't let anybody tell you what you have to do. Yes. Everybody has an opinion about what needs to be done in order to make anything happen, yeah. and quite frankly. Yeah. It's up to the individual. It, yeah. It, just because you can't make this happen doesn't mean that I can't make this happen. Kind of thing. Um, and that is an argument I have with myself every week. Well, if you want to have a band, you have to play covers. Mm. Ah. Yeah. If you want to have a successful cover band, you have to have a pretty young lady in the band. She doesn't have to sing. She just has to be in the band. I've heard that. Oh. I've been like, oh, really? Yeah. I, allow me to pull up this list of working cover bands. They're all guys or all girls. You know? It's You're like, right. Or, you know, and... Our, our, our main drawback was I was the youngest guy in the band at the time at 32, and we were doing, like, we weren't a particular, this is a, a Beatles band or, you know, a, a, a 70s band. We were doing whatever we wanted to play. So we would go from literally playing Metallica, uh, turn the page, morphing it into Bob Seger, turn the page, or vice versa, mm. to Weezer, Hashpipe. <laughs> to, to Deep Purple. So we were, we were whatever we wanted to play, and that's hard to market. Steve Meyer told me that actually. Yeah. yeah. Steve Byer. Anyway, we know the the secret to being a successful cover band in Vegas is being the union. Yeah, we never did that. Yeah. And I still have not done that. 
Um, you gotta be in a union. Because it's not my full-time job, you know? Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. It, it really does open a lot of doors. However, you then run the risk of becoming that dead-eyed cover band. Right. Yeah. But, which is fine. Which is fine. Um, I think it's really important that people who play music play it for what they enjoy doing. And yeah. some people just enjoy playing music. Some people want to be the forefront of the stage. Some people just want to make a living. Yeah. Some people just want to do it in their bedroom. And what, whatever that is, wherever that is, it's okay. Like You want to see someone light up playing their, their own original music? Take someone who they make their living from corporate or from casino cover band gigs, and they play. Yeah. Boom, boom. Mustangs. Here we go. Boom, 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 boom. We can't play too loud because it's, you know. And then you let them play their own stuff somewhere, and they are through the roof. Yeah. They are so freaking happy and excited, uh, which is, I love having them on this. On if the their heart is still in it. That's the trick. That's the trick. People get soured so quickly. A, a, a good example is Aaron Archer. Who yeah. He has, I love him. He, sits, he has filled so many different positions in so many different bands that needed somebody right, up, right away to do covers. And he, he's all multi-instrumentalist. But his own stuff, nothing like what he plays for those kind of things. Right. But man, the passion is there. Yeah. One more question. You made it. Okay. Woo. Nice. Already? Yes. <laughs> it's, a, it's a school night. These people got to get to bed. <laughs> Wednesday was my suggestion. Mm. Yeah, no, it's it's all good. Um, <laughs> but also, I'm, I'm out of questions. So, last one. Let's pretend we're talking to little Zoe, little Ben. Mm. What would you tell so yourself when you first decided to start making music? Mm. What do you wish someone had told you? And don't say change your strings. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Do not stop. Mm. Do not stop. That's the, fine. The time <laughs> in between practice is just as important as the practice itself, if not more important than the practice itself. Do not stop. Do not stop thinking about it. And do not stop striving for that. Whatever that idea is, whatever that is that made... That made us think maybe we can do this. Don't let go of that. Yeah. Let it grow and nurture it and water it and and allow the time off. Allow the space to breathe. If you don't pick up a guitar for two months, it's okay. It's okay. Two months is not eternity. It's okay. Just stop. If you need a break, stop. Mm -hmm. And pick it back up mm -hmm. and go when you're ready. Yeah. So important. Mine is stay away from the van. Stay away from that guy in the van. No matter how much candy he offers you. <laughs> oh, you said van. Yeah. I thought you said band. Like, yeah. stay away from the band. And that too. That makes it hard. Yeah. <laughs> and and um, <laughs> stay away from church. Yeah, stay away from churches too. Stay away from churches? Churches, yeah. Oh, their chicken's terrible. Yeah. Thank you. I'll and see more <laughs> food poisoning from there. They stay away from, uh, yeah, just. Uh, no, but seriously, go, what do you wish someone had told you when you started? Um, yeah, don't take that stupid fucking job at the church. Jesus. That, job that, that sounds like a whole other worst, conversation. Worst decision ever made. Don't ever, uh, yeah, don't. If somebody offers you a job, this is just general advice. Don't ever take a, a job. Ever. Just, just don't, don't work. Just don't work if you don't have to. How about just, just don't? Yeah, there's, there's no don't. such thing as a good job. I mean, it's, there's no such thing because they're always <laughs> screwing you somehow. Ben. And if some here's my advice. If some guy <laughs> goes like this and gives you a paper, you're piece fired. Paper, <laughs> some, you're not in my band anymore. Just let me finish. If someone gives you this shit, he goes like, "You heard it here first. <laughs> if somebody, if Room some, six news newsflash. Like, extra, let me, extra. Let me finish. If some guy has a contract and you're gonna sign a contract, and the guy goes like this, do not sign that fucking contract. Oh. If he if he does this shit, do not fucking sign that contract. That's my advice. That's your honest Okay. <laughs> I have nowhere to go from there. I don't really I, I, I have a response to that. No, no, that I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. I do. And he looks in the eye and he like sticks his tongue out like that. Just <laughs> What is here? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I it. Be, before we move upstairs for the performance, I'm going to add one more thing to that. Re following on what Zoe said, regardless of how often 
you make the music or create the art. The fact that you're thinking about it, the fact that you do it occasionally means you are an artist, you are a musician. Maybe you're not a professional, or if you are, if you have gotten paid to do it, good news, you're a professional, but you don't have to make that your life. The whole point of music is to make life worth living. The whole point of art is to make life worth living. If it makes some people uncomfortable, that's what good art does. But it, it shouldn't be a drudgery. Mm. There are plenty of jobs for that. Music or art should be your release. I mean, in all seriousness. Yeah. And I can tell from these two, and I can tell from many, many interview guests, and just people I've reviewed, that that, that is what they do. They, they do what they got to do to pay the bills. And that's okay. That's noble. Pay, feed your family. Feed, you know, pay the, keep the lights on. Pay for the car insurance and all that. And that's fine. Pay for gas for your home. <laughs> do, do what you got to do so that you can go enjoy performing. And more importantly, support other people too that do it. You know? Very important. It's so hard to get up and go do a thing. And if just showing up, you're going to make someone's day or night. And, and that's important. So that's it. We're off our soapboxes. Thank you very much for watching. Stick around. We're going to see a couple songs from these folks up in room six. And if you'd like to be on the channel, hit me up. i got a link down there, social media link. Um, in the meantime, temporarily say goodbye. We'll see you upstairs in room six. Say goodbye. See you there. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Ba. There's always one. Zoe Day, here with Ben Duran from Virtue Sounds. This is a new song, it's called Gasoline.
home. And this is our song, Memories. This is our song, Masks.
myself when I've lost control. I want to thank Zoe and Ben for dropping by from Virtue Sound. It was a great interview and a great performance. If you'd like to check out more from them, please click the link down in the description. There's also a link down there from my social media pages, including ways you can support the channel, such as room6.shop for merch, uh, Patreon, my CDs, and all that other jazz. In the meantime, if you'd like to be on the channel, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, hit me up. There's also a link in that uh, social media link. To see more videos like this, click up there. And if you'd like to subscribe, I really appreciate it. It would mean a lot. Please click down there and don't forget to ring the bell. Remember to be amazing. And uh, we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. <laughs> really? Nothing?